A couple of things that we want to talk about in this video, and, and it's going to lead us to some AP questions. A vector is something used to describe direction and magnitude, as you can see. Uh, to plot a vector 1, 3, uh, that means that this, this piece moves one unit in the x direction and three units in the y direction. So, of course, from the origin, that would move up to here, and we would draw an arrow at the end, not a great arrow by me, but an arrow that says this is the length, the where it's moving, the direction, and how far. Now magnitude is length. Okay, This just means the length of the vector. So of course we would use Pythagorean theorem. So the square root of 10. Now again, this is just a really quick introduction to a nice way of writing um, and a shorthand way of writing things that are, that are directional, that tells us how something's moving and how far did it move. There's a lot more to vectors and, and a lot more that you'll see as this year goes on. This is a really quick, simple uh, explanation, but a vector is anything that is used to describe our motion and really, the nice thing is it describes it in two dimensions. It gives us how did it move horizontally, how did it move vertically. So, over one, up three. Now, what you're going to find is that, you know, as we look at vectors later, you know, you'll start putting things around saying, well, what if the vector started here? Well, as long as it still goes over one and up three, it's the same vector. It gives us the same thing. So, vectors don't really depend on where you start. It really tells us more how is something moving. Okay, so in calculus we often use them with parametrics because of course parametrics have an x equals and y equals component and it's a nice shorthand to be able to put them in that form like that. So a particle moves in the x, y plane so its position is given by that. So let's just put that in a vector form. I'm going to put it down here. I'm going to say position which we usually denote with s. Position vector is t cubed plus 4t squared. So this is the x, and t to the fourth minus t cubed. So this is the y. So you'll see it says velocity. You can see some questions up here maybe reading ahead. we got a velocity and acceleration. Well, the nice thing is it's the same kind of movement that we make in one dimension, because parametrics is two dimensions. It's x and y moving about in the xy plane, as opposed to last year when something was moving along a line or an axis. Now we can move about freely in two dimensions. So the derivative, maybe you'd expect it, it's just 3t squared plus 8t. It's the derivative of the x component and the derivative of the y component. And acceleration, we go the second derivative or the derivative of velocity and derivative and that's it so it really is nice it's a pretty slick uh, a way of working so the velocity at 1 of course we put plug 1 in and we get 3 plus 8 is 11 and we plug in to the y component 4 minus 3 is 1 and this tells me the velocity components. It tells me it's moving at a, at a rate of 11 in the x direction and 1 in the y direction. And this is expected. It's supposed to be two components. Okay, It's supposed to be like that. The acceleration at 2, well, what, I'm going to skip speed for just a second. Um, acceleration, so now we'll just plug 2 in here. So 12 plus 8 is 20. And 12 times 4 so 48 minus 24 is 24. This is the acceleration. And again, it's got two components. If something is moving about in the xy plane with both an x and a y component, its velocity will include an x and a y component as well as its acceleration. Telling us, okay, how's it moving side to side? How's it moving up and down? How's it accelerating side to side? How's it accelerating up and down? Now, speed is a little different. Speed is the magnitude of 
of velocity. Now, it's always been the magnitude of velocity. That's not how we normally set it before. We would say, well, speed is the absolute value of velocity. And that's because we're moving only in one dimension. So if I could make just a little note right down here, you know, we used to say that uh, speed was the absolute value of velocity. That's what we said in Calc 1. And it was easy. We said, well, if velocity is negative 3, then the speed is just 3. But what we really were denoting is that the magnitude of our velocity was 3, meaning it was 3 units away from 0. Well, now we've got two dimensions. We're moving 11, you know, a, a velocity of 11 in the x direction, a velocity of 1 in the y direction. We have two components. So to find the length or magnitude, we need Pythagorean theorem. So it's going to be 11 squared plus 1 squared. So the square root of 122 is our speed. So velocity has two components, acceleration has two components, speed is one number. It is the length of velocity. And it's not a way we normally talk about absolute value, but that's what absolute value is. It's saying how far away, what length are you away from zero? Well, if your velocity is negative 3, you're 3 units away from 0. That's what we're saying here, too. Just so happens you've moved 11 units to the side, 1 unit up, so your length is 122, or square root of 122. Now, how far is the particle moved? How far really means in two dimensions, and imagine this, you know, before when we talked about one dimension, something just moved up or down, or, or side to side, now it can do both. So this thing could loop around or do any kind of crazy thing. When we say how far, we mean the length of the curve. Well, that's arc length. Now, arc length in one dimension was the square root of... And let me just write it real quick here. It was the square root of 1 plus the derivative squared. And this was really to cut everything down to say how is something changing. Again, it's one dimension. It's, it's not moving up and down and side to side. It's only moving one, one way. So the length of the curve is a similar formula in parametrics. I'm going to put it down here. It's just a little bit different. Our formula here is still an, a, uh, an integral from 0 to 3. It's still a square root, but instead of just dy dx, dy dx, I made that a little sloppy, we actually do dx dt, which give us, is really velocity, right? Maybe I should write that, that this is dx dt and dy dt as well. It's that squared plus dy dt. Squared. Like that. That is the length of, the, of a parametric curve, something moving about in two dimensions. And you'd calculate that, of course, using fn int. That's a really ugly integral to do by hand. So, things are similar but a little bit maybe more complicated in two dimensions, but pretty doable.